What if I told you that you already know who your first or next bookkeeping client is? You do. They're probably waiting for you and they are in your network. You don't need to have a social media presence. You don't need to do any cold calling. In fact, you don't need to do anything other than nurture your network because your first or next bookkeeping client is already among the people that you know whether it's your primary tier or your secondary tier. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to share with you three different places where you can go and find your first or next bookkeeping client. And by places, I'm also going to share with you, it's the method. And I may have a bonus for you if you stick around till the end. Hi, I'm Veronica Sagastumi. And if we haven't met already, I am a bookkeeping business coach because I also run my own bookkeeping and accounting firm, Fortified Accounting, if you wanna check it out. Now, I created this channel, the Profitable Bookkeeping Biz YouTube channel, to share tips, best practices, and strategies with you so that you can start, run, and scale your bookkeeping business with ease. Where am I going to find my first or next bookkeeping client? This is one of the most commonly asked questions for the new bookkeeper who's starting their own business. And it is okay because it's it's a real worry, right? You need to make sure that you have a pipeline of prospects and that you have a process by which to either get referrals or that you're going to go and get these prospects to speak to and talk about your services. But in the very beginning, you're overwhelmed with so many different things that you have to do as a new business owner. But there is a way that you can nurture your network and your network is everybody that you know, your friends, your family, your colleagues, your ex coworkers, all of that. So we're going to get into it in just a moment. I just want you to know that for the most part, this doesn't require you to do a lot of things on social media. It doesn't require you to cold call people that you've never met before and that you may feel really uncomfortable doing the cold calling or doing your sales pitch because a lot of times we're not sure how it's going to be received. Instead, I'm going to really walk you through how to nurture your network in order for you to feel good about reconnecting and providing a value and a service way before you even pitch your new business. All right, let's get started. The very first method or place that I'm going to suggest that you find your first or next bookkeeping client is with your last employer. Now, very quickly here, when I was considering going out on my own after being with corporate America for 20 years, and I was always in the field of accounting and finance, I was thinking about what could I do in order to give myself sort of like a running start. And one of them was, um, I started to talk to other people as to how they did things. And one of them suggested that I speak to my employer and see if there was a way that I could transition out of my role while still helping them to find my replacement and then start consulting for them as I looked for other clients. And that is exactly what I did. I put a proposal together, not a huge one. It wasn't like a big old seven pager, but I did think through as to the benefits that I could present to my employer as to why it would be good for them to keep me on as a consultant while they looked for a replacement that I could then transition the role to. And believe me when I tell you that I was really, really nervous because I wasn't sure how it was going to be received or if they were going to go for it. So I needed to make sure that I was ready to have that conversation. And in order to prepare for that conversation, I needed to draft like what it would look like for them. I didn't want my employer at the time to do any of the work. And what I mean by that is I didn't want them to try to figure out how was this going to work. I was going to do that for them. So if there's a possibility that your current employer would be open to having that conversation, you may wanna think about how can you propose something like that where you start to transition out of your existing role, convert into a consultant, come up with a rate that you can charge them, list out what it is that you're going to be responsible for and help them to find your replacement. And when the replacement is found, you train them and you're still you know, there kind of overlapping while the new person comes on and takes over your position because ultimately you want to move on and get another client 
but the first way, the first place where you can find your first or next bookkeeping client is with your existing or your last employer. And why I say your last employer is because it's just that you are going to be transitioning from an employee to a consultant or a contractor type of um, type of role. And that in itself requires you to start thinking about what you would charge, what you would, you know, the service that you would deliver. And a lot of times this is a lot easier because you've already been doing the work. It's just that you're ultimately going to be facing yourself out by, you know, replacing yourself. But can I, can I just tell you real quick that oftentimes when I have recommended this to some of my other clients and colleagues, and they go ahead and do it, they ultimately end up staying on with that last employer as a consultant. That employer becomes their very first client and they stay with them for a long time because they realize that that consultant, you have so much knowledge and, and experience and you know so much about their existing business that you become an asset that they can count on for either an ongoing basis or for projects. Can I tell you that I still do some work for those early clients that I had worked with before as an employer, as an employee for that employer. Um, they call me periodically because I have so much experience and knowledge, deep knowledge about their business that it's such a shortcut for them to be able to just call me and ask me about that thing or to assist with that project. So method number one, you may look at your last employer and see if you can find and convert them into your first paying bookkeeping client. On to method number two. Your friends and your family could be an incredible resource for you for a referral pipeline. What I mean by this is I'm not suggesting that you work with friends and family. As a matter of fact, I strongly discourage it. And the reason why is because inevitably there's a miscommunication, a misunderstanding, and it becomes uncomfortable, or you may have to have some challenging or difficult conversations. It just creates a lot of problems. However, in many ways, and at many times, your friends and your family, they want to help. They want to support you, especially if you start to share with them what your vision for your new business is. And in order to have, it's kind of like a, if you know that movie, Jerry Maguire, help me help you help your friends and family help you. And the way you do that is, is by starting to think about what it is that you want your friends and family to be able to uh, use as a way to refer you or to introduce you. And a lot of the ways that you can do this with is to pre-script some emails or texts or messaging that you can let your friends and family know, hey, here's what I'm doing, here's who my ideal client is, or who is, this is the person or the business that I love to work with, that I'm looking for. I'll often say to my, my friends and family and in my network, I'll say, I'm looking for my unicorn and my unicorn is this, this, and this. So they know when I say, you know, hey, have any of you met my unicorn lately? They know who I'm talking about because I talk about in, in great, great, um, a, a very specific way of who my unicorn is. All right, so your friends and your family, it could be primary and secondary, help them help you. Whatever it is that you're using to communicate with your circle of friends and family, especially your close-knit ones, draft a couple of different emails or different um, messages that you can share with them as to what it is that you're doing, who you're looking to work with to support, and uh, who you're looking for as a client, and how it is that you could get them or how they can get you in touch with them. What I mean by this is oftentimes make it easy for the people that we want to help us make it easy for them and you can easily give them hey here's my contact information so you'll draft a script and you'll say hey if you know of anybody please give them my contact information and you can inter you can do a brief introduction and i'd love it if you could you know pass this along that's it keep it short and simple because what you want is you want to be easily referred easily referable easy to get in a hold of and easy to be able to talk about what it is that you do. For example, if uh, in a previous email, I talked about how easy it is to refer someone who specializes by industry. So if you have a bookkeeping service that specifically targets dentists, 
So maybe I'm at the dentist and my dentist is like, oh my gosh, do you know of anybody who uh, can help out with our bookkeeping or with our with our books? Usually they'll say our books, they don't say bookkeeping. And I'll say, uh, what are you looking for? And they'll tell me a little bit. I'm like, you know what, I do know of somebody. Um, let me put you in touch with them and uh, you know, you guys can take it offline from there. Or you can, you know, when I make the email introduction, you guys can take it from there. So many times, if we are vague, we make it really hard for somebody to make that introduction or to give the referral. And we have control of that. We can draft a very specific way that we would like to be introduced or that we would like to be referred so that we're top of mind and we're the go to. OK, so your friends and family is not the pool that I'm asking you to go and tap into in order to support them. Although if you want to, that's great. I don't encourage it. That's something that is very personal, a personal decision. But if your friends and family would be great to use as a referral program uh, extension, like a direct outreach. Uh, second level because you're able to let them know very comfortably hey here's what I'm doing here's what I'm looking for and here's what I'm starting to kind of think about they're going to want to help you so use your friends and family that's method number two all right ready for method number three now we're on to your true network your business network these are the people that you have worked with before that you have worked for that you have gone to school with that you met at a conference that you met at a sort of some sort of business function volunteer function this is your network and so a lot of times you know life happens and we let go of our network we don't keep in touch it is very easy to reconnect rekindle that relationship and start to nurture that network and we don't I don't suggest that you reach out straight off, you know, right off the bat, the very first email or the very first point of contact for you to tell them, hey, um, I don't know if you know, but here's what I'm doing. And, and if you know of anybody, let me know. No, that is not the way that we nurture a network. That is not the way that we form and rekindle relationships. I will share with you that besides the fact that my last employer became my first paying client, I never had a website to begin with. I should have, we'll talk about that in a future video, but my very first, I wanna say three to four clients came from inside of my network. And I didn't pitch to them my, you know, here's what I'm doing, do you know anybody? anybody? Not at all. There is a way for you to nurture your network and it starts with a very simple, uh, genuine, authentic reaching out, whether it's direct message, WhatsApp, text, voicemail, email, however you keep in touch with that contact, you should reach out with a simple, how's it going, especially with how it's been in the last couple of years with the pandemic and going home and all this, um, you know, just a lot of different layers of complexity that our lives have taken over. How great is it to hear from an old colleague or somebody that you used to um, get along with really well and just say, I was thinking about you the other day, how are you? And that's it. It's about rekindling the relationship, the connection, and starting to um, open up the communications, okay? I actually have a great resource for you. It's free. It's called Nurture Your Network. And I have six email scripts in there because I walk you through step by step on how to rekindle that relationship without feeling sleazy, annoying, like you're bothering them. You're going to be leading with an authentic curiosity and, and wanting to reconnect and leading into then letting them know what you are up to. All right. So if you want to grab it, it is called um, it's going to flash probably over here um, to the right. It's called Nurture Your Network. I'll put the link in the description wherever you're watching this video and you can grab it. I also want to encourage you to um, even if you're not interested in the in the email scripts, I have emails that follow up in, in that um, sequence of emails. I even share with you an already spreadsheet to do a client relation management system. And it is a Google spreadsheet. It's already created for you. It's one that I used to use myself at the very beginning and for the first three to four years of my, of my business. I used it as a way to track who I contacted, um, what I sent them, when I want to contact them next. And anyway, you grabbing that Nurture Your Network resource in the link that I'll, uh, I'll share below will give you the subsequent emails that come with that email sequence where I share additional tips, best practices, and strategies. And by the way, 
that very first, I think it's the first email that where the resource comes in. I also break down how I earned six figures within six and a half months. And I break down the entire math for you because it is absolutely doable, but it does require some pre-planning and some work and you have to talk about your business. And so that's one thing where I'm gonna encourage you, whatever method you use, whether it's uh, converting your last employer into your first paying client, uh, reaching out to your friends and family as a way to let them know what you're doing, um, getting in touch with your network, you're going to have to talk about your business. And so in many ways, before you even get out there to talk about your business, you may wanna take a step back and think about what is the service offer that you wanna that you want to make available to start with. Remember, you make it, keep it simple. You can start easy, get fancy later. What is that service offer that you want to um, let people know about? Who are the people that you want to serve? What is the software system that you want to start out with? Because that is the key is if like you can at least specify a couple of different industries that you want to like become an expert in, just use one software, like whether it's QuickBooks Online or Xero or FreshBooks or Wave, just pick one so you can at the, at the very least let people know, yeah, I, I, I work with construction general contractors and I use QuickBooks Online and I'm 100% virtual. That in itself make it so much easier for someone to be able to refer you. And that is, again, the research that I'm sharing with you, Nurture Your Network, comes with e six email scripts where you can start with the strict scripts and customize them depending on the tone that you want to use with the network, with the contact in your network that you're going to be reaching out to. We speak to our friends very differently than we speak to ex co-workers or colleagues that we work with in a more professional setting. So customize the email script to fit the tone that you want to deliver. But at the at the end of the day, you will have to talk about your business. You don't have to have it all figured out, but at least have an idea. Okay. All right. I think I mentioned that I may have a bonus for you. So if you've stuck around this long, I think you're ready for the bonus. Okay. Okay. So the bonus place where you can find your first or next bookkeeping client is using job sites, job sites like Craigslist, Indeed.com, even LinkedIn. Go and look for people who, companies, or even small businesses who are looking for part-time bookkeeping help. And what you're going to do is you're going to draft an email or some sort of cover letter where you're going to reach out to the people that are looking for that part-time bookkeeping help, whether it's uh, maybe it's administrator, administrative, manager, gen uh, full charge bookkeeper, but you're looking for those people who are already looking for someone like you, is, except that they're thinking that they're going to have to hire an employee. And what you're going to do is you're going to draft an, an, uh, some sort of communication where you're going to reach out to them and highlight the benefits of why they may consider hiring a consultant, a contractor, an independent contractor, or um a bookkeeping business owner instead of hiring an employee. And what you want to do is, you know, the pros and cons of, you know, having an independent contractor versus an employee. If you guys want me to create a video that where I go into a lot more detail as to the differences between hiring an employee and a contractor and talking about those benefits so that you can pitch it to these companies, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to make that video. But for now, we're just talking about the different places where you can go and find your first or your next bookkeeping client. Again, I'm going to share a quick story with you. Back in, I had just graduated from college. I think it was about a year and a half out of college. I did go and get an accounting degree. So I did graduate from college with my um, bachelor's in accounting. But in the early days, you know, it's just about getting experience. But I also liked, I've always had liked having my own business. So on the side, I started to offer my bookkeeping services and I had a lot of different clients. That's how I know that I can tell you the quicker you can specialize by industry, the better. Because I had one client as a general contractor, another client who was an eye doctor, another client, it was just all over the place. Um, so the quicker you can specialize, the better. But back then, I used to go to Craigslist and I would look for people who would um, be looking for part time bookkeepers and I would just draft like a cover letter. I didn't have a resume because the cover letter is where I was pitching for them. It's like, hey, um, I know that you're looking for and I was very specific as to what it is that they were looking for. And then I would say, have you considered hiring an independent consultant to do your bookkeeping services for you? 
um, if you hire a consultant, you're able to do A, B, C. And I was just talked about how they were they could easily scale up or scale back, you know, and it, de it depended on the on the demands and they didn't have to guarantee any certain amount of hours. This is back then, I've changed my tune now, but back then I would say, hey, you don't have to hire or pay for workers comp, unemployment, um, I provide my own computer, you know, so I would just kind of highlight the benefits and I would tell them I'm experienced, these are the systems that I use, these are the softwares that I know. If you're interested, I'd be happy to talk to you but if I was doing that today, I would give them a link that they could schedule some sort of um, consultation call with me. But back in the day, it was all on the phone. So, or email, I think, oh my God, I'm dating myself, but it was, I think I had an AOL account. Anyway, that's another thing that you could do. Yeah, it requires some legwork, but this is your business. You're starting out. I've just given you four ways, four places where you can go and find your first or next bookkeeping client without needing social media, without cold calling, or without having to you know, resort to any sales tactics. How does that sound? Are you excited? Do you see the possibility? Once you start to get those first paying clients, pay attention to how it went, what worked, what didn't, because that's how you start to develop your own system, your workflow. And you're going to rinse and repeat the things that worked and you're going to let go of the things that didn't. This is your business. You get to develop it the way that you want. These different methods that I've just shared with you are what we call direct outreach. It requires you to do some legwork. It requires you to put yourself out there. But if you can come up with a structured way, like, you know, every day you're going to do this for 30 minutes or you're going to do some sort of outreach for one or two people or, you know, you're going to concentrate on your friends and family on one day, the network the next day. Again, you're going to have to develop what works for you. But these are very, you know, they're, they're true and proven methods, ways that work give it a chance. We have covered a lot of information in this video, but I want you to just take a deep breath and see what's possible. You're going to be able to come up with a way to get that first or next bookkeeping client that works for you. Will it be your last employer? Will it be your friends and family? Will it be in your network? Or will it be in one of those job boards? Don't be shy this is your business you gotta get comfortable talking about it get excited about it the opportunity is so large all you have to do is take the next step and that next step may result in you just grabbing that free resource that i have for you because those six email scripts will jump start they'll fast track what you need to uh, create in terms of that communication to get this direct outreach method going I can't wait to hear how you do. If you have any questions, as usual, leave them in the comments. I hope that you have found this information helpful and don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell so that you're notified the next time that I publish one of my videos. Until next time, I'm Veronica. Bye for now.